Three, two, one. My friends and I, we're from the San Fernando Valley, that flat stretch of land on the other side of the Hollywood Hills. But with actors, waiters, and wannabes who can't afford to live in Los Angeles. Look, I have an idea. Thursday social. You want to come out on Thursday? This is going to be the best night of your life. I'm DJ. We got to get out of here. Um, obviously, this is your first film as a filmmaker. Why, why this film to, to sort of to make your first foray into filmmaking? Um, I'm really lucky that this is my first film. Um, I've never, I've never uh, identified with a specific genre of movies. I've always, I've always liked music, mm -hmm. like music movies. Right. Um, and to me, the best music movies are coming of age movies, whether it's Clockwork Orange or Train Spotting or Saturday Night Fever or Flashdance or Mean Streets. Like, the thing that all these movies have in common are they're about kind of young adults from the wrong side of the tracks, generally from a working class background, trying to get up in the world and, and find, you know, their way as both an artist and as, you know, as human beings. And um, and I'd actually had an idea. I had an experience when I was uh, 19. I lived with uh, one of my best friends who who's from the San Fernando Valley, and this was the life that he was living. And I stayed with him for a summer, and he was promoting at clubs with all of his friends, and they were these like good-looking hustler type guys, and like they would you know they would stop every girl that they saw even if the girls were driving like the opposite way on the street like they would throw their car in reverse and like back up and like talk to them at a red light and i just like didn't I, that intimidated me i've never been one of those guys that does that and i always have to wait in line at clubs and then i don't get in and so um i was always i was fascinated by this lifestyle smoking weed all the time and taking drugs and and then being able to function doing all that stuff it it all seemed it was very, it was like culture shock for me. And I'm also from New York City originally, and like no one has a car, and people drank more than they smoked. And uh, going to the Valley was like a totally different experience. Like I had only known the Valley from movies and 80s movies, and it was this kind of archetypal American upbringing place. And then to go there and have this experience really left a, a mark on me, or left me with a strong impression. And so, um, I got a call a couple years ago from Working Title, this really amazing production company. I knew their films. I know the Coen brothers, like amazing films that they did. And um, they asked me if I would be interested in doing a film that took place in, somewhere in, in the world of electronic music. And I was like, yeah, like that's the only film I want to make. Um, and they they were like yeah come you know you can come in and pitch us on any storyline you want and i had had this idea of these four promoters from the valley um and i thought oh why don't we make one a dj that makes sense he you know they promote at the club and he djs at the club and and i just love electronic music and i have since the 90s um before there was such a thing as edm and um it, it was it was a perfect fit so they, you know, I loved this, and then they found me, and then, you know, we went from there. Mm -hmm. Obviously, you come from a background in short filmmaking, documentary making, and a TV with Catfish, the TV show. How did you find that transition from that to this really sort of stylized or sort of big feature film? Um, in a way, it's very similar to short filmmaking. It's, and in a way, it's very different. In the way... On the first day of, of filming, I realized that it was unbelievably similar, especially at this level. Like, this is a small, we didn't have, not, this is a small movie is not the right way to say it. We didn't have a lot of money, and we didn't have a lot of time, um, and we didn't have a lot of time to prepare the movie. So um, we had to, it, you know, you got to think on your feet, you're, they're constantly problems, things go wrong, and you've got to really quickly figure out how to, you know, creatively problem solve. And in that sense, it's like anything I've ever made ever. You know, you have an idea of how you want something to turn out, and then you've got to work really hard to get it there. That's kind of universal across the board, and whether it's shorts or features. Um, the difference is that features, whereas a short, you're doing that for maybe two or three days. As a feature, you're doing that for like 30 days. So it's like a marathon versus a sprint. So you really have to pace yourself. 
And the other part um, is that you are, you know, you're you're the general of a, of a large group of people. Not the, this was a, again, like a small crew, so it wasn't so massive, but still I'm used to doing everything myself, uh, editing, shooting, uh, writing, directing. Um, and I generally do the, like I'll do the voiceover myself too. So working with actors and then crew and a DP and, and really communicating over and over again what I want, but beyond that, also motivating people and they're not working for much money and so they're working for glory or they're working f because it's fun because you're making a movie so it, we I had to keep it fun and light and keep everyone on their toes and so in that sense it was very challenging. Mm -hmm. Zac Efron makes for a very convincing DJ. I mean, why, why Zac Efron for the film? Zac found us, you know. Um, I, I, I didn't expect we would get such a big movie star. Um, and uh, Zach saw a little uh, teaser that I cut for the film, and we met. And I'd heard that he, um, I'd heard that he really identified and connected to the script. And I, I assumed, oh well, that's because it's about music. And I imagine Zach likes electronic music. Everyone, you know, like I, a lot of people like electronic music. But that wasn't the case. He grew up in the valley too for uh, the later portion of his. Uh, adolescence and he had friends like this and we totally connected over you know where we where our own personal status is within a group of friends like not quite the leader who is the loud one the fearless one and not quite the runt or the nerdy one too but the guy who's kind of quietly in the middle watching what everyone else is doing and especially these type of loud characters too and we really you know, connected over that, and, and that was his uh, way into the script. And obviously, once he came on board and, and believed in the project, you know, we were we got a lot more exposure, and, and the movie probably, you know, we wouldn't be here talking if, if he didn't believe in it. Hi, howdy, howdy, hi, hi. You're James Reed, right? Minus, you could call me multiply. What are you doing Saturday? I just get the bird. Mm -hmm. More like an eagle. You can make people dance, and that's half the battle. James thinks you're really talented. You're not going to get anywhere using the same old sounds that every other laptop DJ's using. Yep, yep, you know that I don't. This is me on the regular, so you know. Whenever you guys are ready to start making some real loot, you need to holler at me. Don't you feel like there's a lot more quality stuff we could be doing? Successful artists, they have this moment where they stop being an admirer and they find their signature. I think I have something. This is the best part. It's the moment before it starts. There's a lot of beating hearts out there. What's up? I'm Cole Carter. Please.